question 6 says the two ends a and b of a rod of uniform cross sectional area are kept at temperature 40 naught and t naught respectively the thermal conductivity of the rod varies as k is equal to a t where a is a constant and t is absolute temperature the temperature of the middle section assuming steady state is okay again it's a question from heat transfer by conduction where thermal conductivity of the material is a function of temperature t so let's first of all uh, write the differential equation for the heat current and that differential equation for heat current is if the heat current is say h then we have h is equal to minus k area of cross section let's say the area of cross section is capital a dt by dx now we can take a cross section at distance x and having thickness dx and for this element this equation is valid h is the heat current now heat current is going to be same everywhere so let's now put the expression for k which is a into capital t and so we have h is equal to minus small a capital a again let me remind capital a stands for area of cross section and small a is the constant that's been given to us into t dt by dx so we have a differential equation h is going to be same throughout so if i bring dx on the left hand side we have h dx is equal to minus small a capital a capital t dt let's integrate using proper limits for x equal to 0 the value of temperature is 40 naught and for x is equal to l let's call the length as l so that means at this end the temperature is t naught that's been given so solving this left hand side reduces to h into l and the right hand side is a capital a by 2 it's the integral is going to be t square by 2 but by putting the limits and taking care of the minus sign we are going to get 16 t naught square minus t naught square or 15 t naught square so this in fact gives us the value of h now to find the temperature at the center of the rod the value of x there will be l by 2 and we will use the integration again but we this time we are going to put the value of h which is going to be same everywhere in steady state so we then have a small a capital a by 2 into 15 t naught square by l that's the value of h this into integral dx again so integral dx this time x goes from 0 to l by 2 and on the right hand side we are going to have minus a capital A integral T dt. The temperature goes from 4T0 to temperature at the center. Let's call it Tc. So let's simplify it further. So now we have 15T0 square by 2L into L by 2 on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we are going to have 1 by 2 into 16 t naught square minus tc square so it is 16 t naught square minus tc square and let's simplify still further this tells us that tc square is equal to 16 t naught square minus 15 by 2 t naught square and that is equal to 16 minus 15 by 2 t naught square which is 17 by 2 t naught square so if we take square root on both sides we are ending up with tc is equal to this is t naught so it's t naught under root 17 by 2 and if you look at the options well it is matching with option 4 so option 4 is correct let's go to the next question now question 7 says 
one mole of an ideal monatomic gas is taken through the process AB along the curve P by T square is equal to constant C graph. Heat absorbed by the gas in the process is, well, these are the four options and this is the graph. PT graph is given to us. Now the equation of the curve is P by T square is equal to constant. Well, the question is from the topic thermodynamics and uh, let's see if we can convert it into the form PV to the power X is equal to constant and uh, for doing that, let's use PV is equal to nRT but n here is 1 so PV is equal to simply RT and this means that we can put T is equal to PV by R and if we do that our equation becomes P by T square that means P by P square V square is equal to constant and that means we have PV square is equal to constant. Of course the values of constants will be different for different equations but what matters here is that it's a constant and uh, so it is now fitting you know it is matching with the uh, x equation PV to the power x is equal to constant and the point is that we have readily available expression for molar specific heat for the process PV to the power x is equal to constant and that molar specific heat will be CV minus R by x minus 1. So in our case it is CV now it's a monatomic gas so CV is 3R by 2 and minus R x is 2 because it is PV square is equal to constant so x is 2 2 minus 1 is simply 1 so it is R by 2. So the molar specific heat for the process comes out to be equal to R by 2 and so the heat absorbed is Nc delta T and of course is 1. So it is simply C delta T and C is R by 2. Now if you look at the expression the value of delta T is 2 T naught minus T naught. 2 T naught is the final temperature the temperature at B as per the graph and T naught is temperature at A. So delta T is 2 T naught minus T naught or T naught. So R T naught by 2 is the heat absorbed by the gas in the process which means option 2 is correct. Let's go to the next question now. Question 8 says the molar heat capacity of an ideal monatomic gas undergoing a process varies as C is equal to 3R by 2 plus alpha T where alpha is a constant. The equation of the process is well, we can, let's apply the first law of thermodynamics and according to the first law of thermodynamics, we have dq is equal to du plus dw, the first law of thermodynamics in differential form, we can write like this and dq can be written as nc dt, so that means n C dt is equal to N C V dt and it's a more uh, ideal monatomic gas. So C V will be 3 R by 2. So that means it is equal to N 3 R by 2 dt plus P D V. So if we substitute the value of C, what do we get? C is 3 R by 2 plus alpha t. So that means we have N into 3R by 2 plus alpha T and then DT we can shift on the other side. So it is equal to, in fact, let's remove N also. So that means it is equal to 3R by 2 N cancels off plus 1 by N P dv by dt. Now from this equation it's very clear that 1 by np dv by dt is alpha t. So this means we have 1 by np dv by dt is equal to alpha t or p 
PDV is equal to alpha T DT and there is of course N here. This is the equation that we are getting and uh, let's also use the ideal gas equation where PV is equal to NRT. So if we put that here, so instead of P we can write NRT by V and if we do that we have NRT by V N dV is equal to alpha T dt and this N goes off. This tells us this T also goes off and that means we have R dV by V is equal to alpha dt and now we can integrate both sides and if we do that we have R ln V is equal to alpha T plus some constant C. This we can put in the form ln V is equal to alpha T by R and plus some constant again, let's call it C dash and uh, well, this can further be simplified as ln V plus ln some constant, let's say K is equal to alpha T by R. So that means what we have done is we can we have put minus C dash as ln K. So this is ln V into K is equal to alpha T by R and which means V into K can be written as e to the power alpha T by R or again that means that V e to the power minus alpha T by R is a constant 1 by K which is a constant. Now it is clearly matching with option 1. So option 1 is correct for question 8. Let's go to the next question now. Question 9 says a black body of surface area 5 cm square is placed inside an enclosure of constant temperature of 27 degree C. The black body is maintained at 320 degree C by heating it electrically. The electric power needed to maintain the temperature of the black body is and the value of sigma is given and these are the four options. Well, it's very clear that the question is from the topic uh, radiation. In fact, it's based on the Stephen's law of radiation. And uh, what is happening here is that there is uh, electrical power being consumed and which is uh, being lost in the form of radiation by the black body. Now, the electrical power P will be then the rate of loss of thermal energy by the black body and that is equal to sigma, the Stephens constant whose value is given into area, I am just writing the expression first, into temperature t to the power 4, t is the Kelvin temperature of the body minus Ts to the power 4 where Ts is the temperature in Kelvin of the surrounding. Now let's put the values, sigma is to be taken as 6 into 10 to the power minus 8 SI units. The area is 5 centimeters square which is 5 into 10 to the power minus 4 meters square and then within bracket temperature of the body is 327 degrees C which can be taken as 600 Kelvin so it is 600 to the power 4 minus the surrounding air is at 27 degrees C which is 300 Kelvin so it is 300 to the power 4. Well, we need, simply need to uh, solve this and to get the value of P and that will be our answer. So, it is 30 into 10 to the power minus 12 or it is also 3 into 10 to the power minus 11. And well, we have from the bracket we can take out 10 to the power 8 and then we have 6 to the power 4. That means it is 36 square minus 3 to the power 4 is 81. This is the electrical power needed and because this is the 
rate of loss of thermal energy by the black body. Well, if you simplify this, this comes out to be equal to 3.64 watt, which matches with option 2. So, option 2 is correct. Let us go to the next question now. Well, we are now at question 10, which says the molar specific heat of an ideal gas for a process varies as C is equal to Cv plus alpha V, where alpha is a constant. The equation of the process may be given as, and uh, well, these are the four options. So, for this, again we apply, and the first law of thermodynamics says that dq is equal to du plus dw, and dw can be written as pdv, and dq is then ncdt. If the molar specific heat is C, then dq is ncdt. Well, we know N is the number of moles and dt is the infinitesimal change in temperature. And this is equal to du. du is ncv dt plus pdv. Now, this gives us that C should be equal to cv plus 1 by n pdv by dt. So, that means if we compare this equation with what is given to us, we get this equation that 1 by n p dv by dt is equal to alpha v. And uh, well, let us replace p using the ideal gas equation because we can see very clearly that among all the options, p is not appearing anywhere. So, let us get rid of p by using p is equal to nrt by v. And if we do that, then we have 1 by n nrt by v dv by dt equals alpha v. And well, on further simplification, we get dv by v square is equal to alpha dt by rt. And well, uh, we can integrate both sides. Let us do n definite integral. And this means we can write minus 1 by V is equal to alpha by R ln T plus C, which further means that we can now write minus R by alpha V is equal to ln of T into some constant K because ln t plus ln k will also be a constant. So, this is how we can write it and this means that we have e to the power minus r by alpha v is equal to t into k or this further means that we have t into e to the power r by alpha v is a constant. So, if we look at the options, well, it is clearly matching with option 1. So, option 1 is correct for question 10. Let us go to the next question now. 